Welcome back to another episode. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, hello. I hope you enjoy the video content. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already and hit that like button so that lets us know you like our podcast content. And hit the notification bell so you never miss a video with Lisa and Lisa. Today we're talking about a highly, and I'm not even joking when I say this, a highly requested slash asked question. I feel like this is probably one of the most common, probably like the first question someone, question or concern someone were to ask us if they wanted to start a sticker shop. And that is, is the sticker market too saturated slash is it too late for me to start? Like every time we have an IG live or we, we you know, put like a little question box on our stories Mm -hmm. this question is for sure going to get asked 100 percent. so it seems like this is a big concern for everyone and that's understandable because i don't disagree that the sticker market if you look at facts there are a ton of sticker shops there's definitely a lot of sticker shops compared to when i first started but in terms of asking is it impossible to be successful in this sticker market like even if you started today I definitely think it's not too late and you can for sure have a chance at success but if you want to um, even today how or learn how I should say we'll be talking about that at the end so you got to listen through this but first off let's just talk about the market the state of the market today and how yes it is saturated there are plenty of sticker shops. It's not like back in the day where I'm like, hmm, I want planner stickers. You might only be choosing from like a small handful. Yeah. Yeah. Versus like now, yes, there are uh, hundreds of shops, but there are certainly ways that you can make yourself stand out. And the way I like to say or prove this to you is that, okay, like every single year we get this question. We've been in business for seven years. So for seven years, people have asked this question. And for seven years, I have seen new shops come out and become superstars, like really blow Mm -hmm. up. And so it truly were the case that it's so saturated that no one can start and do well, then I wouldn't be seeing these shops literally grow to these huge, you know, like household names, quote unquote, over every single year. So, yeah. And I feel like social the rise of social media has definitely contributed to there being more sticker shops. But I feel like it now it's easier to start a business. And because social media, there's so many different platforms, like you have a better chance at sharing your products and people seeing them. Definitely. And then also just think about how like, If the market was so saturated that there were no new, like you couldn't acquire customers or build your own shop, why would we as an established shop want to help others start their own sticker shops? If it were such like the pie is only so big, that would be totally Mm -hmm. detrimental to us, right? It's, but it's like, no, we want to help people and start their own sticker shops because there is plenty of room. You just have to find what that room is. But the Mm -hmm. pie itself is not a set number of, customers or dollars exactly I feel like if anything like the more shops and like the bigger the sticker community becomes like more and more people see it more people join like it's not the other way around where like there's only like a limited number of customers or anything like that I feel like if anything like if it becomes so popular like more more people are gonna like be aware that this community exists Exactly, exactly. So we've answered the question, is the market saturated? And our, our answer is yes. But let's talk about mm-hmm. why someone would, someone would still want to start a sticker shop despite this. Yeah, I, so, think, I think there's just so many options. I feel like the, the options are truly like limitless. Like when it comes to what type of stickers you want to make, where you want to sell them. There's just like so many different things that uh, people are looking for, like yeah. in terms of options. Because we were just mm-hmm. in um, the Ultimate Planner sale, and I'm just thinking about this. But in the Facebook group, people post like, "Hey, I'm searching for 
this kind of sticker, like, hey, I'm searching for stickers. I saw someone post, like, I'm searching for stickers for applying to jobs, or, like tracking applying to jobs. And like, no one responded. So like that right there is a customer who's looking for something that may not already exist yet, or maybe it exists, but there clearly isn't a lot of competition. So there's certainly customers out there who are looking for things whose needs are not being met. Yeah. So if you can offer those things, I mean, these people are willing to pay, like they're already there looking for these stickers. So you could certainly still succeed in this market. I feel like when you're part of the sticker community and like you really are familiar of like what's out there because you're a part of this community, you know what people are, what shops are selling. It's kind of easier to see what is missing. Like, for example, I know when I started, there weren't that many shops selling sticker kits. A lot of just like cute little icon stickers, but like not a whole bunch of kits. So that's something I was like looking for. And I feel like because I was part of the sticker community, planner community, I knew like, oh, there's not that many options like for sticker kits. I'm I'm going to make my own. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I feel like it helps when you're already in the community and you know what's out there. Right. So I I would say that's probably kind of important is to know or like to be a part of the community and not just like, I mean, hopefully no one listening to our podcast is someone who's like, hmm, I'm looking for a get rich quick scheme and Mm -hmm. I'm not actually into stickers. I just want to make a bunch of money. Hopefully that's not the case because I think that's actually detrimental. Mm Mm-hmm. I feel like, right. I feel like if that is you, if you are someone who's listening to this, trying to just overnight get rich quick, that's first of all, not possible. I don't think I've seen anyone in the sticker community do that. And secondly, I feel like you need to have some knowledge of this community and know the customers a bit. And you can't just like pump out things just to just to make money yeah just to make a quick buck because that's not gonna that's not sustainable and I feel like people will see right through that I totally totally agree not that's not to say that you can't become rich but it's more like you can't just go into the this with the mindset of I am going to become rich I don't give a crap about stickers I'm just here for the money Mm-hmm. Uh, but I feel you, like you you, you need care. to know like the community and the customers yeah. and just be a part of this community. I agree. And hopefully that's everyone listening to this podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because if you're here to just make a quick buck overnight, what, like what are you doing that's, here? that's not gonna that's not gonna work out too well for you. Yes. I was also just thinking about how to t- kind of like have like an analogy to the sticker market. I feel like the beauty market is also really similar. Maybe beauty and fashion, but let's just go with beauty because I know it a lot better. Um, Mm -hmm. Having worked in the beauty industry, like I feel like it's very, very similar in that there's so many brands. There's so, so many beauty brands. There's Mm -hmm. like makeup brands, skincare brands, et cetera. Um, But you'll notice that despite it being such a huge industry, despite there being so many big brands, like there's certainly new brands that come in every single year. If you go to Sephora, yeah. I see tons Sephora, of Sephora, I was just in Sephora last week and like there are so many new brands, like small indie brands. And I just feel like there's like, you can always like join no matter, join an industry no matter like how big or how established all the other brands are. Yeah. Exactly. Like you have these huge corporations, Estee Lauder, L'Oreal, they own a bunch of beauty brands that you know and love. But if every single person who started one of those indie brands at Sephora was like, wow, like there's these big companies I can't compete. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to try. Like we wouldn't have all these new brands coming in. So that is to say Thinking about the beauty industry, it's very similar to the sticker industry. There's plenty of room for new Definitely. And also the same brands that were popular in 2015, I'm thinking of like Tarte, Anastasia, Beverly Hills. Tarte, Too Faced, Becca, RIP, now. Like Like, all these big, big brands are, I want to say like. 
at the not same ne- spot. Yeah, not nearly as popular as before. They've definitely lost their shine a bit. But it does just goes to show that like it doesn't matter how big the brands that are currently existing are, like you still have a chance. Yes. And the same could be said for the sticker industry or like the planner sticker market, especially mm-hmm. like if you looked at some of the biggest shops in 2015, some of those shops aren't even around anymore. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely. That just goes to show. Okay. So how does one stand out in such a saturated market? Like, let's say you are someone who wants to start your sticker shop or you just started. Mm-hmm. What can you do to you know, yeah. cut through the clutter? I feel like we always say this. And like everyone always says this, but like finding your niche is so important. And I feel like a lot of sticker shops start out wanting to do everything, like sell everything and anything and everything under the entire (laughs) sticker community. And I feel like that is so hard, first of all, to come out with such a big range of products. But secondly, like I feel like that's how you get lost in the crowd is because you're you're trying to do too many things and you're not focusing on one specific item or n- like specific theme i guess and it makes There's it hard for a theme. right There's there needs to be a, a theme. theme there needs to be a niche like i feel like it's hard to stand out when you're just doing a little bit of everything but if you are really good at one thing that makes it more memorable in terms of like customers thinking about you and like, oh yeah, I know that shop. They sell this or like they specialize in this only. I feel like that's, it's so much easier to stand out that way. Right. Like if you think about the most popular shops that you purchase stickers from, it's probably, you're not just saying, oh, they, they sell everything or I buy everything from them. Probably chances mm-hmm. are like, even if they do sell a lot of stuff, you buy a certain thing from them. Mm -hmm. So picking one thing, getting really good at it or being known for it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like our second most asked question is like, how do I pick a niche? And, and listen, I, we can't come up with that answer for you. I feel like we had a whole episode on like how to find your niche. So go listen to like, yeah, go listen to that episode because there's so many more tips in that episode, but I feel like just finding what you're excited about, what you're passionate about, and it's easier to find your niche that way rather yeah. than just trying to see like, oh, what's popular? Like, I'm just going to copy that and do that. Like, chances are you probably aren't going to want to do that forever. <laughs> agreed, agreed. In terms of like the nitty gritty of like, how do I find the niche? How do I develop a brand identity Mm -hmm. we do talk a lot more about it in our ebook so I would recommend checking that out if you haven't Mm -hmm. but because there's so much to it it's not just picking a font it's not just picking a logo or like picking some colors colors. like I do think it's really important to have a strong brand identity and to be consistent with your branding because that's also going to help you stand out in a crowd of hundreds of shops if you are consistently using the same aesthetic same brand color palette same whatever Mm -hmm. like style that definitely also will help you also how you stand out in terms of like offering unique designs because okay sure like you sell planner stickers but Mm -hmm. like what kind of planner stickers like maybe you okay just going off of the example i had earlier where i saw that that in search of post for like mm-hmm. applying to jobs, maybe your stickers or your shop is centered around like career goals. And, like, mm-hmm. You could do like motivational quotes. You could do like, I don't know, job applying stickers. Mm-hmm. My go-to example, because it's something that I love, is like exercise stickers. I don't think there's enough exercise stickers out there in terms of like fake like, activities. Right, like tracking your workouts like workout specific maybe I don't know if you do like strength training and you want to track like the the workout you did arm day leg day and like your workout split and like the weights that you use like I feel like there's no nothing's coming to mind of like where I would go to look for that 
kind of sticker, uh-huh. those kind of stickers. So just like being really specific, I feel like another example that comes to mind is like budgeting. There Ooh, are yeah. some like budgeting sticker shops out there that are like finance focused and like they have like bill tracking stickers, sinking fund stickers, like all sorts of like finance related stickers. So truly there's like a niche for everything. <laughs> you just Definitely. have to like Definitely. find what you like, I guess. Yeah, because all those things are really specific. So if you weren't like, I'm not really into finance stuff. So mm-hmm. I'm only barely familiar with sinking funds because mm-hmm. of you, because you've told me about them. Uh-huh. But, <laughs> but like, see, I'm not into that. I wouldn't know those things. And so why would I want to start a finance sticker shop? Because I wouldn't know all the nuances. But like, I could certainly do like an exercise sticker shop because I do know all of that. So mm-hmm. like picking a passion that you're already into makes it so much easier because you know yeah. these things. You're familiar with it. Like you're already an expert of some sort. So it's easy for you to like come up with idea, like sticker ideas for it. Yes. So those are our tips and basically our take on everything. Is the sticker market too saturated? Yes. Is it too late for you to start? No. And you have all these ways of becoming successful despite entering the market, not at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to remember that success does not come overnight. It's going to take dedication, hard work, creative thinking. um, And you can really truly in my opinion, build a successful sticker shop that can stand out in a crowd of other sticker shops. So that being said, don't let the saturation of this market hold you back from pursuing your dreams. And uh, amen. Yeah. (laughs) Start your sticker shop. Start your sticker shop. It's it's going to be a fun ride. And that also reminds me, we're currently working on our accelerator program mm-hmm. um, just to give like a little teaser of what's going on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. We're working on it. We're creating yes. the content. We finally like nailed down some things. Like it's definitely going to be five weeks. Mm-hmm. The focus is to get you to launch your sticker shop at the end of the five weeks. So everything leading up to that is lectures, work assignments, etc office hours Mm -hmm. to get you to that point in a structured environment with a cohort of amazing people so that's what we've got so far yeah currently still working on it thinking it's probably gonna happen june july around the that time and then in terms of like when this is all gonna be like for sale is probably gonna be june yeah and I will leave a, a wait list link in our show notes because I, I'm sure if you're interested and you want to be part of the the sale because it's going to be a short. It's going to be a short, sale. quick sale for this. Again, it's a cohort of people. So we're not going to, you know, like have unlimited people. It's a structured program. Mm-hmm. So the sale will be quick. Got to get those spots. Mm-hmm. So if you are definitely interested, the wait list will be in the show notes. And... That is it for this week. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and to hit that bell to turn on post notifications so that you never miss any of our uploads. And don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.